audio jungle. Hey there, my name is Peter Ingebrigtsen, and I'm going to walk us through integration with McAfee Active Response and Advanced Threat Defense. This is a new feature in the ATD 3.6.0 version, and it's done through the Management Console or the Management tab in the Advanced Threat Defense dashboard. Now I'm going to walk you through two scenarios. The first one will be uh, where you think you're going to go ahead and do the integration, and you'll notice that, hey, some of this doesn't seem right, or the communication can't be right. So I'm going to show you um, maybe a pitfall that you might have when trying to configure this, or maybe the documentation isn't super clear. So I wanted to make that clear in this video. And you'll notice here that in the DXL settings that everything looks pretty good. I've got my EPO login enabled, I've got uh, DXL settings, and my DXL or my data exchange layer status is up, and I'm even publishing events to EPO. So everything looks like it's good, right? So if I just come across and um, hit apply just to be sure. What I'll then do is I will download a, a file using my malware generator. Download this file directly to uh, this uh, this client that I'm working on here. What I'll do is I'll just right click here and save. But I won't run it. If I run it then Ty will actually prompt it. So what I'm going to do is just click Save. I'm going to get a warning here, but I'm going to keep it. I want this file on my on this desktop here. So we'll go Keep. But then what we're going to do is I'm going to come up here to this link, and I'm going to submit it to ATD. So what I'll do is I'll just copy the link address instead of actually getting the file. I'll take it over to ATD and the Analysis tab, and I'll submit this manually. And on the manual upload section here, I will change the file from the file type to URL, and that should get me what I need. My mouse is giving me a lot of trouble in this window here, but so all I have to do is change that to URL download and then paste in that URL that um, I just copied. So let's see if I here. I'm going to change the analyzer profile. Analyzer profile one, as many of you know, is actually a um, Android. It's the default Android. So this is a, I need a 64-bit for this sample. So I got a Windows 7 64 as my analyzer profile, and then I'll submit this here. Oh, okay. And as I come up to file status, you can see that this uh, install TME Trade Trust FDDD3C is analyzing. So what I'm going to do, is so let, just so that you can see that this is working, is I'm going to come over to my EPO, and I'm going to do an active response search um, with that um, file name, just so that we can see that it's working, and what we should be seeing in our uh, ATD reports. So I just need to change these here. And what this search is going to return is the host name, the IP address, the OS, and then on the file name it's going to give me the status and the full name. So this is where I want to do this. Now just a little side note, I'm not an expert in active response, but the full name is really nice because active response allows you to take action um, based on whatever you return, whatever ATD returns this file as. So if I want to come in here and get the full name, then I can do that and then when I highlight this, I can copy it And when I come down here to take actions, I can actually um, just paste that full name right into the action so that it knows um, if I want to kill a process or delete a file, um, it's going to ask for the full name. So the, all you have to do is copy and paste that. I'm not going to do that for purposes of the, the demo here. But if we come back to ATD, we can clearly see that our alpha client, which is the client I'm working on, has that file here. But if we go back to the report, the FDDD3C file, 
and take a look at the report, down at the bottom section in the new release, you'll notice that the active McAfee active response to product is not available. And we shouldn't be getting this because we thought that we did all the integrations correctly, but there's one other thing that we need to do in EPO to make this happen. And that is we need to come over to the DXL server and make some changes. Actually, let me go to my system tree. Let me show you the ATD that I'm working on here. So in the server section, I've got my environment here. I've got this ATD 3000, but I also have this local host. Now this local host here is actually the same IP address of the ATD I'm working on. And you'll notice that the system tag um, isn't ATD 3000, but it's local host. And the tags are ATD DXL and workstation. So um, what I need to do from my DXL fabric or her um, it's coming to the uh, server settings here and then on the t on the DXL topic authorization what I need here is this Mars server API. You'll notice that the only people who have permission to send and receive tags from the Mars server is the Mars server. So we actually need to go in and change that. So we're going to go ahead and edit this. And on this Mars server API, select here. And then we're going to go ahead and do restrict send tags. And what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll add ATD DXL which is the tag that my ATD had and workstation it had both of them so then we'll just click OK and save and we'll come back and we'll run the same we'll do the same test again so in, in this case We're going to come back and we'll generate a new sample. So we'll just get a whole new file. We'll put it'll download it onto the client in the same way as we did before, and then uh, run it in ATD. So we'll do the save link the, here just to get it locally. And here we have zero DB four seven A. We'll also copy that link and submit that for analysis to ATD. And what that should do this time is it should go into the ATD report and run a, an active response query. And that'll allow us to see, okay, here's a file that we know is bad. Is there anyone else in our environment who has this file? And allow us to get an idea of the, the scope or the prevalence of a potentially malicious file in our environment. So a really nice new feature in the ATD uh, 360 release that not only gives you information about the file but gives you a little bit more information about how that file is being seen in your environment and then allows you to go take action appropriately again 764 and submit okay if we move back We'll start the same process over where we'll go to active response. We'll do a search and make sure that we can see that file in our environment. And then we'll make sure that that matches what we get in our report coming back from ATD as well. Now in this active response catalog, you'll notice that there's collectors, reactions, and triggers, and searches. I'm just using a search that I saved, so all I have to do is come in here and change the last little bit, whatever I have in quotations here. Zero DB four seven A. We'll just add that in there. Four seven A. Let's see if I type something incorrectly here. All right. I may not have hit that keep in time, so we will be able to find it on this search, but we'll see if that search for the 
ATD was fun. So here it is, alpha client, the it's current, and the full name is there. So let's go back to our advanced threat defense and see if our report was able to find the same information. And that information is located near the bottom. Here. Yep. Uh, so here we see that the active response has identified that this file actually resides currently in our environment. So we haven't run this file yet, but if, for example, uh, we had run it, our threat intelligence exchange would have gotten a block and perhaps submitted it to ATD. But in this situation, we had ATD do that search for us and report that out for us. So um, the key component for the integration is really lies in that DXL um, this DXL topic authorization here and adding these tags to the send and to the send tags for the Mars server API. Hopefully that'll help you get your environment up and running. Audio jungle.